going on? This is a CV update here on the channel. I'm gonna explain why I can't say the name of this thing. I'm gonna talk about lots of things, but if you don't like this video, in the first 10 seconds, I'm gonna tell you, go over, look at the other video I did today. I still believe in Vegas. I still think it's a great place to live. And I did a video on a bunch of reasons why I like it here as a local in 2020. That's more your cup of tea. Please watch that. And uh, you can go ahead and do that before you dislike this video. Uh, and speaking of this video, I can't say anything except for CV. We can't call it anything but CV. And here's a reason why. Because people in my comments in the last few videos are saying, well, so-and-so is saying it and that channel is saying it. So why can't you say it? It's because YouTube punishes channels and demonetizes them and deranks them. It's really the deranking and the unlisting that I don't like. They say that it's uh, something that's not family friendly and family appropriate. So whereas I might lose a few bucks on this video if I get demonetized, I lose a lot more information getting to you if I get deranked because YouTube doesn't want to promote it. And that's just the politics of YouTube, which is why I have the Patreon, which is why I'll be doing the Vimeo, which is why I can talk more freely there about certain taboo subjects in Las Vegas. My name's Steven, I'm a Vegas blogger. We're gonna talk about a lot of stuff in this video. Like, share, subscribe, the channel. What's going on with you? What's good with you? Keep a balanced head. First thing we're gonna talk about is the fact that I can't find any canned goods at grocery stores. I went to three or four different stores in the last few days. Everything's sold out. There's 50 people in line. People are acting a little bit nuts and I'm a little bit concerned for that. Folks, the supply chain in this country is great. There's no reason I can't find ground beef and that you're buying 50 or 60 pounds of it and a deep freeze to go along with it. So please have a level-headed mind and just know that if and when all this passes, we're gonna be able to buy canned goods on Facebook Marketplace for 10 cents a shot, I'm guessing. But uh, you know, we just wanna have what we wanna have so my wife can make the awesome pasta sauce or the amazing Filipino dish that she makes, the caldereta it's called. It's a chicken dish, it's really good. Can't find any canned goods in Vegas. People are kind of slipping on that. Layoffs at MGM Grand happened. Um, layoffs have happened at MGM Grand in the past. This may be a result of CV. This may be a result of MGM wanting to do layoffs and using this. It's like when Coke came out with the new Coke and everyone hated it. And then Coke Classic came and they changed the ingredient from regular sugar to high fructose corn syrup. And nobody noticed because it was a big drama with the new Coke. Anyways, I'm looking at Google News right now and I can tell you this. MGM, let's talk about the entertainment venues, shows, and layoffs. MGM has closed all their nightclubs. Logical, makes sense to me. Who wants to go and be three inches away from a stro sweaty stranger that you never met, drinking alcohol and not sleeping enough because alcohol makes you tired but doesn't make you sleep very well and that's a bad thing for the immune system. A and that's fine, okay, I totally understand. That, that makes sense to me. Um, they are laying people off. Okay, let's try to justify this and play devil's advocate. Either A, they were gonna do this already because they did it last year, or B, MGM is looking at their calendar and saying, wow, we had a lot of things cancel at our entertainment venues and a lot of things cancel at our convention venues and we don't need all these people until this all blows over. And so let's furlough, let's, they call it furloughs is what they like to call it, layoff sounds terrible. These people will get their jobs back when Vegas comes back, I'm guessing, I don't think it's a problem but it is a problem because they're they're not going to make their income obviously um with that being said they have also of course closed their buffets the buffet that i know that is open so far i haven't checked it is the win and uh the win is going to be serving you food you're not going to be serving yourself the win buffet is a super high-end buffet 50 to 5 dollars a person i believe last time i checked don't worry about your win slots, uh, rewards points, because that app stopped being good a long time ago, back in September, when they updated it and made it pay for play 100%. So, uh, yeah, win is still open. Uh, Caesars closed their buffets. MGM closed their buffets. Buffets are a place where you can get germs and bacteria outside of what we're dealing with with CV. So, okay, that makes sense. The Golden Knights have postponed their season. So has every other National Hockey League team. They may pick up the season in the future. There is a problem with all of this, and here's the problem, okay? When the Golden Knights go to T-Mobile and they say, hey, in a perfect world, we're going to go to Game 7 in the Stanley Cup Finals and win it all, the last date of hockey would be the state. MGM and T-Mobile then book entertainment venues to share that, and that would be in the middle of May. If the Golden Knights can't get the space to play because of other things that are performing and happening at the venue, they have to either find a new place, which doesn't exist in Las Vegas. There's just not one that's big enough. Thomas and Mac just doesn't work because it's too old, and it's just too old. 
then they can't finish out their season. This isn't a Vegas problem. This is an every single venue where hockey is played problem because all of those things are used for different events after the hockey season. So we'll see how that goes. The Pac-12, done. We all know that the NCAA is gone. It's not going to have any kind of a season in terms of the Final Four March Madness. If you guys booked see, uh, tickets to come to that, I'm really, really sorry. I'm personally regretful that I didn't cover the March Madness last year because I was running through a lot of stuff in my life and I was like, I should do a video on this. I never did, so that'll have to wait on the channel till next year. But that's gone. That's done. Uh, what else is done in terms of sporting events? You know, there's like Monster Jam and stuff. I've not heard that they've been canceled. That's something that happens over at uh, the uh, Tom, not Thomas, and, yeah, I think it, it might be Thomas and Mac. It could be the other one, Cashman Field. Can't recall right now. Um, but I don't know that that's done. And other big sporting events happening in the future. They're in the future. Speaking of sporting events, let's talk about the NFL draft. Okay, is the draft canceled? People are telling me it's canceled. No, that's not true. The draft is still a go, but the draft is supposed to be a go at the end of this uh, uh, of April. So I think they're looking to wait and see what happens. And what's happened is really simple. You know, China, whether or not you believe them, uh, Chinese government tells the world and nobody really gets to do journalism there. <clears throat> Chinese government says, OK, we're settling down. So that gives them two months. They went through this thing through January, February into March. Europe is having issues. Now, Europe says in some places people are recovering and it might be settling down. That's what, a month, a month and a half? We'll see what Europe is like in two months. So if we have two months of this year, I guess they're hedging their bets on the draft possibly happening because it can be settled down by then. Now, they have canceled some things. They've canceled the ability for these teams like the Patriots, the Buccaneers, the you know, the Packers, the Niners, I'm just saying random team names, to meet with these prospective people face-to-face -face that might be drafted. I'm sorry, I got a itchy nose. And um, that means that they're going to have to do these things through video conferencing. That part has been canceled. That was on March 29th, March 30th, but that wasn't a Vegas thing. So maybe that's where people are telling me that the draft has been canceled. I don't really know. All right, as for shows in Las Vegas, are the shows in Vegas canceled? Well, I think some of them are, but good luck finding positive, like, nail-it-down information on that. If you know of canceled shows because you have experienced this, comment for us below and help us out on this. I do know that Cirque du Soleil's O show at the Bellagio, the most popular Cirque du Soleil show of possibly all time, has been furloughed, meaning uh, they are pulled back the schedule. O has been doing two performances nightly, seven days a week with different casts for, like, a decade, and so they have decided to pull that back give their casts maybe some kind of relaxation, but I really think it's because there's less people to sell the show to. Uh, speaking of which, I don't suspect the shows will last here in Vegas for right now, and the reason is because uh, uh, there's, there's a few reasons, and it leads up to this. Number one, Broadway has canceled shows. Broadway in New York City, all of the shows are canceled uh, because uh, the New York State, I think, has a ban on people and uh, over 500 people gathering in a spot. Now, then we lead to Steve Sisolak. He's the governor of Nevada. He was elected last year. He's declared a state of emergency. Well, okay, we'll get to the state of emergency in a second, but that means that they have powers to do things like this. They could say no gatherings of people over 250, 500, 1,000, and so on and so forth, which makes shows impractical, impractical and impossible to put on. Can you follow me there? So they can't really have a show when they can only sell 250 tickets for the show. It's just not profitable anymore, and they have to cancel the shows, and they have to put everything on a hiatus. Now, what if you bought tickets? What if you did all this kind of stuff? Well, if you bought tickets, you came to Ve you're coming to Vegas, you're looking forward to it, and you just can't get here, contact the airline, contact the carrier, contact the company that you bought the tickets through. A lot of these companies on good faith so they don't have a bad reputation in light of what's happening have gone ahead and said, we will refund you your money. We'll take care of you in the long run. The casinos, I don't know if they're going to close. Don't call the casinos asking them if they're going to close. That's the last thing they have to deal with. They're fielding phone calls from everybody asking them a million questions. I suggest you just keep your ear uh, to the ground. If you go over to Google News, you can actually create news updates, and it'll email you those news updates. So when you got something going on about Vegas, you can get a daily digest and see what's happening. You can also come to this channel and get some kind of information on the news as well. It's a scary, scary thing what's going on because people are worried about the unknown. Uh, the Steve Sissel Act declared a state of emergency. Uh, state of emergency means that they can get more money from the uh, state's coffers because the state has money, but the state's always at a deficit, so I don't know how they have any money. 
every state seems to be at a deficit. It's not just Nevada. Um, but that means that they can also do different things, as I mentioned, like saying no public gatherings over this much and, and so on and so forth and put in restrictions on what people can do, hopefully to stem the, the, the spread of this kind of stuff. So that seems to be where we're at today. I'm going to be doing more quality content in Vegas stuff, uh, moving here, living here, vacationing here, because I do have faith that this city is great. Uh, it's going to be a little bit tough for a while. People have to keep their cool and realize that uh, this is something that could be just a passing flu. It's something that could be really bad, but we don't know enough yet. And when you don't know enough, it's the fear of the unknown. Okay, you follow me on the fear? He knows. You follow me on that? That's why you don't like the night. Nobody likes to go out in the dark. Some people are not afraid of the dark, but most people are. That's why when you see a mouse run across the floor, you go, what the, what was that? It's fear of the unknown. You don't know what it was. We don't know what this is. So people are like operating in fear. We have to have a little bit of faith and we have to operate in a little bit of faith mode. The faith that uh, this country, itchy nose, my gosh. Seasonal allergies, people. Don't flip out on me. Um, we have to operate on faith that we've faced bigger things like this. Go look up the swine uh, thing that happened. I can't say the F word. The swine blank that happened in uh, 2009. Um, go look up uh, SARS that happened in 2003. I was in Canada where I'm from at the time. And you had a lot of uh, people. Toronto was damaged. They had a big benefit concert with the Rolling Stones there to show that it was not bad. It wasn't going to be the end of the world. You know, you had mad cow disease. Mad cow disease happened. I was in Alberta, Canada, where I'm from at the time, and everybody up there was flipping out. Beef was 10 cents a pound. They would be like, here, take, a, take 50 pounds of beef, 100 pounds of beef when you buy this deep freeze at the grocery store. That's how bad it was. And we still pulled through as a society and as a people, and I still believe we can pull through as a society and as a people. On a positive note, I want to thank everybody for watching this channel, and I'm going to do my best to update you. Uh, some people have been really negative in my comments. Some people have been super positive in my comments, and some of the negativity has been directed directly towards me, saying things like, uh, what do you know anyways? You're just reading off of Google. That is true, but I'm giving you a daily digest. You don't watch the news channel and say, what the heck do you know? You're just reading off of Google, but essentially that's what they're doing. They're telling you stories. A lot of people are telling me, well, some people are telling me, a few people are telling me, you Vegas bloggers are not talking about it. You're talking about it. You're damaging Las Vegas. Oh no, I'll call Troy, my friend. I don't think I'm damaging Las Vegas by talking about something. I think I'm helping people make informed decisions. I think that the, the world kind of knows that there's something going on. I don't think that one guy with uh, not a lot of subscribers anyways is going to hurt the situation. But guess what? I love all you guys for watching. You're the best part of my day when I make these videos because it gives me a nice little boost of uh, dopamine in my brain and some endorphins so I can go take on my day. I got to go unpack some boxes. The house looks great. My wife is an angel from the planet Philippines where all the angels seem to come from because she's been putting this house together. And I can't wait to talk about Vegas in a future video. Want to be in the credits of the video? The credits are coming up. You can do it. Just go to patreon.com slash not leaving Las Vegas. Like, share, subscribe. And also, send me an email if you guys want to. Join us on Facebook, Not Leaving Las Vegas group. Three, two, one. Is your name in the credits? Comment below. I got to go. Click. Thank you.